It's an honor to be with you today. A few months ago, a speaker at the White House Tribal Youth Forum was a man named Jimmy Gomez, also known as Taboo. You might know him from his time as a member of the popular group Black Eyed Peas. In fact, Taboo was the first indigenous Mexican-American to headline the Super Bowl halftime show. In his remarks, Taboo delivered a poem about indigenous excellence. Now, he's a much better poet than I am, but I wanted to share a piece of it because it was powerful. He says, indigenous excellence is a respect for our past while honoring our traditions its scholars, its professors, its CEOs and entrepreneurs, its futurism, its tech, its respecting Mother Earth and its elements. Taboo hit on something. Indigenous excellence cannot be singularly defined. It lives with, within 574 federally recognized tribes, each with unique culture, traditions, and stories. It lives in the many ways you honor your past while embracing your future. Indigenous excellence is down the street at your native youth leadership session where your sons and your daughters, representatives from so many of your communities, are leading, advocating, and making such a huge impact. Yes, let's give it up for our youth. Let's give it up for our youth. And indigenous excellence is right here in the room today. You've heard me talk about this before, but I'll say it loud and clear again and again. The Department of Education, we're fully committed to respecting and upholding the tribal sovereignty and self-determination of Native American tribes. Educational sovereignty is part of that commitment, including building strong systems where the ability to speak a native language is considered an asset, not a deficit. This work is really important to me personally as, as it is professionally. I spent years as a classroom teacher and a school principal after earning my master's degree in bilingual bicultural education. For me, someone who grew up speaking Spanish at home and for my students, our native languages are huge assets with so many academic, cognitive, economic, and socio-cultural socio benefits. It's because of these experiences that I created the department's Raise the Bar agenda. Raise the Bar is a call to action for all of us to come together and transform education and advance educational equity and excellence for every student, everywhere. And to get there, we have to create more culturally affirming learning environments and build more pathways to multilingualism, including native languages. We've got to recognize these languages are superpowers that they are. And we have to do our part to ensure that every student has a pathway to learning them. Yet by 2050, some, estimate, some people estimate that only 20 native languages will be spoken. 65% of all indigenous languages are now extinct. That's heartbreaking. And as tribal leaders, I know this is something that you grapple with in your communities. While we can undo the centuries of harm and shameful role that the federal government played to erase native languages and cultures, we can make sure together now that it's our goal to ensure every native community has federal resources and support to revitalize native languages and to honor indigenous cultures. That is our responsibility. President Biden has made it a priority. We're developing a 10-year all-of-government strategy to preserve native languages. Our approach includes funding native language resource centers across the country dedicated to revitalizing indigenous languages. It includes the first ever Native American Teacher Retention Initiative, supporting evidence-based strategies to address the critical shortage of Native American educators. It includes uplifting the important work of our White House initiative, led by the incredible Naomi Miguel. Naomi's over here. Have you met Naomi? Yeah, Naomi's amazing. Naomi Miguel is so amazing, I named myself after her. Our approach also includes a national comprehensive study of Native American education in public and BIE schools. The baseline data from this study will help drive our national plan. You've been asking for this, and we're delivering on it. 
On Monday, we held, a, we held a tribal leader listening session to gather feedback about this effort. Thanks to Naomi for facilitating this vital conversation and to all of you for your valuable input. When it comes to nation to nation relationships, we're committed to open and transparent dialogue with all tribal nations. And one of the things that we heard in this conversation earlier this week is that we want more participation from state and local leaders for tribal consultation. I'm committed that we're gonna communicate more directly with them to say that's an expectation from the federal government. At the Tribal Nation Summit, I know you had questions about student data in public schools, including clarifying how the Department of Education differs from the interior when it comes to collecting native students' demographic data. Right now, we're gathering more information and I hope to continue this conversation through tribal consultation very soon. Our approach to nation to nation relationship also includes reviving what I call intentional collaboration. We're making sure that grant funding prioritizes meaningful partnerships among tribal, state, and local education agencies. Our tribal, excuse me, our state tribal education partnership grant is a $1.6 million investment in this work. I keep hearing that over and over. We need to make sure that consultation with our tribes happens regularly. Above all, we're committed to all of you and to building strong systems of college readiness, of workforce development and family engagement in native communities. I started my talk with you today sharing Taboo's words. When he spoke about indigenous excellence, he also described it as total inspiration for our seven generations. The decisions we make for equitable education today matter. They inspire. They help enrich tribal cultures and conditions and contributions with every new generation. I look forward to our continued work together as we uplift the next seven generations of Native leaders. Thank you for having me here today and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.